Priebke's escape from a POW camp at Rimini was made possible by another Nazi war criminal who was to feature prominently in post-war hunts, SS Obersturmbannführer Walter Rauf. Rauf was the officer who was responsible for inventing the gas vans used on the Eastern Front to murder Jews, among several of his crimes. Rauf, who would most certainly have been executed if his case had ever been brought to trial, had managed to smuggle a pair of wire cutters into the camp. In the event, Rauf did not require the cutters, as he managed to hide under a mobile cinema truck that had visited the camp, and he successfully escaped in this unorthodox manner. Before he left, he sent the wire cutters to Priebke, who, together with four other SS men, who were also living on borrowed time, made their way to the Cossack area of the camp that held SS Cossack troops captured in Italy on New Year's Eve 1946. The small group of evaders escaped via the latrines and cut the fences before heading for the seaside town of Rimini. Priebke and his companions first sought sanctuary with Luigi Santa, the Bishop of Rimini, but the cleric was away and the Nazi fugitives were directed instead to an austere convent. The following day, 1st of January 1947, the group decided to split up and make their own ways out of Europe. Priebke's wife and sons had moved to the northern Italian village of Vipiteno, located 30 miles northeast of Murano and very close to the Austrian border, and Priebke arrived at the village by train. He holed up for two weeks with the local priest, Father Johann Corradini, afraid to approach his family lest they were being watched by the Allies. After two weeks, Priebke, now calling himself Otto Papa, summoned up the courage to chance his capture and he rejoined his family, and they would stay in Vipiteno until October 1948. Priebke was right to be cautious, for although his family was not under surveillance, the British were actively hunting for him. Several of the SS officers who had taken part in the Ardentine Caves massacre had already been caught and punished, and on the 26th of September 1947, the British war crimes group Southeast Europe had issued a list of Germans wanted in connection with the massacre, and Priebke's name was at the top of the list. Three of those listed, including Priebke, had escaped from POW camps, and the other two had never been caught. On the 21st of October 1947, the American war crimes branch Austria informed the British in Italy that they had reliable information that Priebke was living in Vipiteno. The British slated Priebke for arrest on the 31st of October, but before they could move on him, Priebke received a warning and disappeared into another smaller village further up the mountains for a further four months. The process by which Priebke ended up living comfortably in Argentina began on the 15th of February 1948, when Father Corradini wrote a letter to Bishop Alois Hudal, the ringleader of the Vatican-sponsored Nazi ratline that shipped fugitives out of Europe via the Italian port of Genoa, requesting that he help the Papa family. Corradini wrote that the Papas had been in Vipiteno for three years, and that Alice Papa and her two sons, Georg and Ingo, were all good Catholics, but that the father, Otto, was not. Papke, Priebke, had told Corradini that he would convert to Roman Catholicism if the Church agreed to assist them. Hudal appeared to have made Priebke's conversion in return for assistance a condition. Priebke's wife, Alice, also took matters into her own hands, and she contacted Father Pobitza at the Franciscan Monastery in Bolzano. Pobitza advised Alice that the family should try and obtain Red Cross documentation. To help them, Pobitza also wrote to Bishop Hudal in Rome. A third avenue of assistance materialized when Priebke received a letter from an Italian fascist friend who was then living safely in Argentina, a man named Alfredo Beccherini. The two men had originally met in April 1945. Beccherini promised Argentinian visas for Priebke and his family if they could send him their details, which Priebke duly did. Soon after, a set of visas arrived in the name of Papa. In the meantime, sympathetic elements within the Catholic Church in Rome were working secretly to aid the Priebke family's escape to South America. On the 26th of July 1947, the Pontifical Commission of Assistance issued a Vatican identity document in the name of Otto Papa to Hudal. 
The bishop then used this document to obtain a Red Cross passport for the German fugitive. The process was finally completed on the 13th of September 1948, when Priebke became a Roman Catholic. Shortly afterwards, Priebke visited Hudal in Rome, where the bishop handed him a blank Red Cross passport. In mid-October, the whole Papa family went to Rome, where Hudal issued Priebke's wife and sons with their Red Cross passports. All of the documents were in the surname Papa. From Rome, the Papa Priebke family went to Genoa, the point of departure to their new free lives outside of Europe and far from the tentacles of Allied justice. Just before departing for Argentina, the Priebkes suffered a minor setback to their plan. In Genoa, there was a problem with some of the information on their documents, and by the time this had been sorted out by an agent working for the other great ratline creator, Croatian father Draganovic, the Priebkes had lost their births. Fortunately, Draganovic's organization had reserved ten births on the steamer San Giorgio, and in return for practically all of Priebke's savings, four of these precious places were given to the family. On the 23rd of October 1948, the Priebkes sailed from Genoa, destitute but free. Argentina would prove to be Eric Priebke's salvation. Priebke's former boss at the SD headquarters in Rome, SS Obersturmbannführer Herbert Kapler, was not to be as fortunate as his wily subordinate. The British had arrested Kapler in May 1945, and they handed him over to the Italians in 1947. The Italians placed Kapler before a military tribunal, which sentenced him to life imprisonment in a military prison at Gieta for his role in the Ardiantine Caves massacre. His first wife divorced him while he was in prison, but he later married a German nurse. In 1975, at the age of 68, Kapler was diagnosed with terminal cancer and his wife was permitted to frequently visit him in private after he was transferred to a prison hospital in Rome the following year. In one of the most incredible escapes of a Nazi war criminal, Kapler's wife, Anneliese, managed to stuff her extremely thin and underweight husband into a large suitcase and thus smuggle the senior SS officer out of prison. With some ingenuity, Anneliese spirited her husband across the Alps into West Germany and into a comfortable home. Although the Italians attempted to have Kapler extradited back to Rome, the German authorities refused all such requests, as the German state on principle does not permit its citizens to be extradited. Herbert Kapler died at his home in Soltau in 1978 at the age of 70. Tune in next time to find out how Erik Priebke was finally tracked down and punished. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my video channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon, details in the description box below.